Thanks for joining us here at Cloud Wars Live, where we explore today's digital revolution by speaking with the business executives and thought leaders who are profoundly changing how the world lives, works, plays, learns, and dreams. Our guest today is Wayne Saden, who's been a CIO, a CDO, a CTO, and is now advising CEOs and boards of directors on how best to move into this exciting new world of digital life, digital business, and the digital revolution. Wayne, welcome. Thanks for coming back and uh, seeing us here at Cloud Wars Live. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate being invited back after the first installment. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And <clears throat> today is our second installment of Wayne Saden on digital strategy. And Wayne, today, I thought if it's okay with you, we'd talk about how this uh, onset of the digital revolution is affecting the roles and responsibilities and priorities across the C-suite. I think that's a very important topic, Bob, so I'm really glad you're asking about that. Yeah, Wayne, let me push this right back to you. So top of mind for you, how does this change everything? What are the new outlooks that members of the C-suite have to have here in the uh, early days of the, the digital era? Well, let's start at the top. Uh, let's start with the board of directors, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk about digital transformation or you talk about digital you can't escape the fact that the board has governance and oversight over everything we do. And so to draw a parallel, if you go back to the dark days of Enron and WorldCom and the passage of Sarbanes-Oxley, the regulatory agency said boards have to work with a technical area that they might not know that much about. That area is finance. And so off balance sheet liabilities might have missed some boards and that's what led to the debacle that ultimately led to SOX. And so they, they formed a, a group called, I'm sorry, a job called the Qualified Financial Expert, the QFE. And so QFEs had to be part of a board to help them with an arcane but vital technical specialty. Now let's fast forward. Here we are in 2019. So you're on a board, Digital is moving from the back room to center stage, and it's vital. And so props to Russ Reynolds, Russell Reynolds for coming up with the notion that we need a qualified technology expert. So if you start at the top, a board should have somebody that understands what the heck we're talking about when we talk about technology at risks, and even more important, opportunities. So if we lay the groundwork there, tone at the top, now we can work down to the C-suite. Wayne, that's an interesting perspective. And I know in our last installment of Wayne Saden on digital strategy, we talked a lot about the role of the CEO, but those dynamics across the CMO, the CFO, the CIO, the CHRO, chief digital officer, and so on, chief revenue officer, they're, they're really changing. Let me start with the CFO. What would your primary advice be to the CFO here in this rapidly changing world? Well, the first piece of advice I want to give to CFOs may be controversial. IT should not report to you as a CFO. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. My first boss when I became a CIO was a CFO. He's actually the person that promoted me into that job 20 some odd years ago. And he was a terrific mentor and taught me things that I still use in business today. However, the CFO sees everything through a lens, the lens called financial, financial flows, financial statements, financial reporting. And a lens does two things. It magnifies and it distorts. So when you're reporting to somebody that sees things through a lens, first of all, we magnify the things that matter to them. So from the CFO's perspective, the vital financial flows are what we should be optimizing. And it distorts because it sees everything in the company, the broad company, as part of the financial flow. I once worked for a company that described itself as an accounting company that happened to be in the energy business. And unless you're in the accounting business, that's not the business we're in. We're in the business of making something and selling something and servicing customers. So for all of my love and respect for the CFO, I think that's the wrong place, although quite traditional, for a CIO to report. Yeah. Wayne, you know, uh, as you were describing that, I, I thought, you know, there's lots of good intentions there, uh, sincere focus and effort and uh, outlook there. But ultimately the the old cliche right when all you have is a hammer everything looks like a nail and mm -hmm. uh you know that's that's not what companies need right now so how about the chro right we hear so much today 
about the battle for talent and the, the, the rush to bring great world-class development talent into a company. How's the CHRO position changing? Well, it's changing because social media and the immediacy and a widespread nature of information means everything that used to be secret about your company culture and things people liked and disliked might have been held pretty close and people found out about it after they were hired. Today, it's all over Glassdoor or it's all over the front page of the Wall Street Journal. And so as a CHRO, you are really working with the CMO who obviously has that responsibility for the messaging to customers and prospects. You've got to treat the talent pool out there in the world as a customer base. And so I suggest that the CHRO, CMO, and CIO need to be a triad linked to be an interesting and engaging and then recruiting the talent you want. And, and then one more thing for the CHRO, or I'm gonna say this to the board members, if you join a board, go on their online portal and apply for a job. Now as board members, we're probably not qualified for most jobs customer, companies have, but look at the process. As a CIO, I cringe at the processes we inflict on people, not just IT candidates, but everybody in most companies. The process is hidebound, the process is slow, the process may be unfriendly. So how do we as IT people go to the CHRO and say, we can help. We can help with a better experience for the newer folks that aren't with us yet. And also try the one day employee experience. Again, board member, ask to be set up as a brand new employee in accounting or in human resources or something. See what they provision, see what winds up on your desk. Because the usual experience of the new employee is, oh yeah, we don't have a password for you yet. They didn't get the computer. We don't know how to get you a badge. Wait a minute, I'm not sure where you park. It's terrible to say it, but that one day experience, that initial customer contact stinks at so many companies. And with technology that we enable as CIOs, we can build a better day one experience for new hires. Wayne, you know, that's an excellent point. And I think especially as we think about today, right, uh, inside companies, we have recruiters. But I think, in fact, the reality is the top talent is the one on the hunt. And th those people are choosing, who am I going to go work for today? And so these impressions that you talk about, day one impressions are vital. And you also talked about the triad there, CHRO, CMO, CIO. If we set the CHRO off to the side for a minute, there's been a lot of nonsense, I think, over the last few years about, you know, the head-to-head -head bud and the CMO has a bigger budget now for spending and the CMO is going to dominate the CIO. I, I think that's just silly. But anyway, how do the CIO and CMO, or just the CMO primarily, how do they move forward into this, you know, heavily digital world? Well, let's start with that widely held assumption that the CMO and the CIO are in a battle for dominance over IT. First of all, when you look at IT spend as it's looked at to create this report, they threw digital advertising, digital marketing into that mix. So that's really not IT. If I spend my ad dollars with a network TV or put a billboard up or spend it at Google or Facebook, that's still marketing, not IT spend. Just because it has a computer attached to it does not make it IT, and it's something I say to people all the time. Now, I've met a lot of CMOs who wind up with some IT function. A lot of CMOs wind up with this little tiny IT department or sometimes great big IT department. I've never met a CMO that said, I really wished I was a CIO and I went to the wrong graduate school and I really want your job. What they say is, I wish you folks in IT didn't think everything is the same. If I need a page change than a website because I need it now, it's not the same as a Sarbanes-Oxley change to the general ledger that needs five levels of approval, three studies and an architectural analysis. Mm -hmm. What I found is that if we think one size fits all, we tend to think towards the most conservative. And I'll say if we work for finance, it tends to look like we're updating the general ledger. But if you are marketing, it's about sense respond. It's about how quickly can I respond to something I saw on the internet this morning. And I built dedicated IT CMO teams that when the CMO in one company looked out of her office door, she looked into the eyes of the IT people supporting her bullpen of creatives. And then when they needed to make a change, they made the change. Because marketing, while it's vital, tends not to affect the you know, the ongoing nature of the order to cash cycle. 
They're not in the middle of the general ledger. They're not in the middle of the accounts payable process. And so we can afford to make changes that, that optimize for speed and optimize for appearance and may not optimize for ultimate quality that we would need if we're feeding the manufacturing system or the general ledger. So it's understanding the nature. Hey, it's kind of marketing. We have to understand and segment the nature of our customers. We have customers in IT. The CFO is one. The person running the factories is one. And the CMO and the marketing team is a different kind of customer that needs a different kind of support. Wait, let me ask about two other C-suite members there. One is the chief revenue officer. What's going on with that person in the digital revolution? You know, I once reported to a chief revenue, revenue officer as a CIO. And so I think it's interesting to say, please don't do that to me again. <laughs> Uh, the chief revenue officer is driven and should be driven by the next deal coming across the, the table. And so when I worked for this chief revenue officer, every time he got a new call from a customer, either one that wanted to sign up for a service or was unhappy, I got new direction three, four times a week, sometimes three, four times a day. So again, recognize they work on a different cycle. As IT, what can we give the chief revenue officer? Number one, the best products we can offer. How do we build them an augmented product? Uh, Marketing 101 says we have, a core, we have a core product, we have an actual product, and we have an augmented product. Augmented often means the customer experience, which means digital today. So how do we partner with the CRO, the chief revenue officer, and give that person a great product? And the other thing we need to give them is a great sales experience, not just for them, for their team, but for the customer. Just like I said, try signing up as an employee try going through your catalog. Uh, I once tried to buy a dishwasher and I went on a manufacturer site and the, it asked me if I wanted the Monarch line, the Regal line, the Centurion line of dishwashers. While that probably made sense to the people in the company, I had no clue. It didn't say expensive, midline cheap, or blue, red, and yellow. I poked around and then you know what I did? I went somewhere else. <laughs> so let's give them the digital tools to enable those salespeople to deliver a message. So that's kind of marketing, kind of sales. But we need to partner up, partner up for a better augmented product and a better buying experience. Yeah. Wayne, how about the chief operating officer? Well, if chief operating officer means the person responsible for making whatever we sell, because that COO means a lot of things. So maybe chief operations officer, but the person who runs the factories, and I came out of financial services. We called it a manufacturing operation. We manufactured loans or accounts or whatever. So it's the same business. And here's a little tip for chief operations officers. When you used to go to marketing and say, I want to do a focus group, I want to get 10 people in a room three times, four times a year, and I want to ask them what they think. Consider now that with Internet of Things or industrial Internet, we're instrumenting the products. So instead of asking a focus group, occasionally, what do you think? Let's ask every single product we ship to the customer, how is it being used? They never go to that screen. When they do that, the drill overheats. It's if it's a digitally enabled drill. So to go back to what you asked me a minute ago, we need to build the right augmented product, which is CMO, CRO, CIO. Then we need to build the data collection, which is CMO, COO, Chief Operations Officer, and CIO. So I think the big change in digital, perhaps, is where it used to be this person talks to this person, and then this person talks to that person. Now we got to get everybody in a room and say, what does the experience look like end to end, top to bottom, outside to inside? Digital has opened up our processes. The four walls of the business no longer define us. The network, physical, and virtual, the network of customers, consumers, stakeholders defines us. And now we've got to think as a management team, how do we build a better, more flexible, more fluid, more agile set of relationships built around a collaboration to create, deliver, and operate the best products that make the customers as happy as we can make them. When, you know, as you were describing that, I, I had to think about the last C-suite uh, executive I'm going to check in with you on, and that's the chief digital officer. So in this highly digitalized world, is the CDO arrow pointing up or down? I've been a CDO. I've been a CIO. I've in fact been the CIO and CDO at the same time. So to me, in most kinds of companies, and there may be a few exceptions, but let's take Main Street, the CDO is a creation. It says to most times to the analysts, 
to the market, even to the company, the CEO gets digital. It's a commitment. It's an aspirational role. Go back 20, 25 years, we had this thing called the internet and everybody realized, oh my God, it was gonna change the world and it was gonna change our company, but we weren't sure how, and it was really weird and technical. I remember appointing at a bank, a senior vice president of internet. And that person who was a combination of a marketer and an IT person went around in IT explaining what the business might do with it, this internet thing, and went out to the business and said, yeah, maybe you've never heard of it. Let me show you a demo on my you know, 40 pound laptop um, and explain what's going to happen. And so it was a role that mixed evangelism, strategy, creativity. If you are an organization with a CIO that gets it, and you should be, you should be delivering a service that works for the business today and tomorrow. So the, the need, the actual need for a chief digital officer in addition to a chief information officer, in my opinion, in a properly functioning organization is nil. Now, if you bring in a CDO and there's already a CIO, my suggestion to the CIO is get your resume updated because that says there's a vote of no confidence in you. Yeah, yeah that person can run the day to day, but they're not ready to be brought into the board meeting except to give the quarterly report. They're not ready to sit in the C-suite and get a seat at the table. So we'll bring in this person that understands technology, but speaks to us as business people. So the message to CIOs is speak about business to business people. Don't speak geek. Or you'll wind up as one of those marginalized CIOs that a CDO replaces. Now, you may need it for evangelism. You may need it for something. So perhaps a CIO would create a function called chief information officer for internet of things or for digital transformation or create a transformation office. So if your goal is to use IT as a step change function, I've got to get from here to here, creating a function for a while, two, three, four years, may be a good idea. But today it's become kind of a blunt instrument. And I said before, the CEO gets the CIO they settle for. Stop settling, don't create two functions, and you'll have a smoother experience. I do wanna give a, C a CEO that's thinking, I need a CDO and a CIO, or I want a CISO, a Chief Information Security Officer, that reports as a peer to the CIO and has purely information technology security uh, responsibility. So the first time those two direct reports, CDO and CIO, get into a technical argument, we should do A, we should do B, what are they gonna do? They're gonna bring it into your office to the CEO and say, hey, please make a decision. As most CEOs, would you wanna be in that position having to arbitrate between two technical specialists who have a technical discussion? That's, would you wanna put international tax as a peer to the CFO because it's really important and then adjudicate between them when they disagree? So, so I've got a lot to say on the CDO role and the reason for it, but I think it boils down to we need better IT to help us get from here to here. Fix it in your C-suite. Fix it at the level of the IT executive, and you won't have the kind of problems that come up when you try to create kind of an add-on role to fix a problem you should fix directly. Wayne, good stuff there. I, you know, it's fascinating how at first, I remember not, not so long ago, you'd hear people say, oh, yeah, we'll need those sorts of special capabilities and this focus on digital, but only in uh, industries like retail or financial services or a couple of others. And quite obviously, I think from the plain common sense you're offering here, these are things that are universal to business and they cut across different industries and size of companies. We're either going to be able to appeal to the talent that we need to go forward. We're either going to be able to create the sort of products and services we need going forward or we're not. And that depends, I think, on, as you've described, top-down, board, CEO, all whole C-suite, thinking in unison about the customer and how we connect through digital pathways. And that's the business strategy. It's not some off-to-the-side, goofy digital strategy, right? I agree. We've said this before, I think, in our first conversation. Digital transformation is transformation first and digital second. Don't think you can point at the CIO or the CDO or whatever you call it and say, go make me a digital transformation. The world doesn't work like that. 
let's start by understanding our customers, our markets, our products, our talent pool, our intellectual property within the company, and build the best us we can build using technology to make collaboration better, to make communication outside better, to make top-down better, to make quick decisions better. And let's then use technology as the tool that it is to create the company we envision to serve the customers we want to serve at the margins we need to raise capital on Wall Street. Wayne, perfect. Um, thanks a million. This, this second installment of Wayne Saden on digital strategy coming across very nicely. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure, Bob. Thank you. And I hope the people that are watching want to make a lot of comments because I really enjoy the engagement. So I'm going to make my personal plea. Follow us, rate to us, speak to us, argue with us, and let's get this conversation going. Wayne, I agree. And to those people who are watching, thanks for your time. Thanks for your interest. We're really having some fun here with Cloud Wars Live, uh, looking at this digital revolution, how it's changing every facet of our lives, where it's headed, where it's going. And uh, we look forward to next month's installment of Wayne Saden on digital to help us uh, plot out where that's going. And as I want to echo Wayne's thoughts there about feedback, please share your feedback with me at bobevanspa at gmail.com. Thanks for being here. And we look forward very much to seeing you next time here at Cloud Wars Live.